tendencies that that that, that make her easy receptible. I, you know, I don't believe it. I know what the doctor says, but says that is she's easily get cancer, and because of this special gene and mutation, that she's also very easy for her to pass this on to her children, and that her children, because they have that gene, is able to pass it on to her grandchildren. And she said that was terrible. She had to tell everybody. And then, right, uh, she said that her husband is coming on with Parkinson's disease, right? And look, y'all, that's an attack. It, it don't take it don't take no genius to understand that is a demonic attack on a family, on a family bloodline, right? Now we know in Christ, right, that we are new creatures, right? New creations in Jesus Christ. However, the Bible also says, listen what I'm about to tell you, woe to doctors and woe to lawyers. That's what it says. Because when you get to the hospital and you can have tremendous faith, you can have great faith, but once they speak that diagnosis over you and they stand in there in a little white coat with a little stepical around their neck and the weight of the hospital and that authority, it is hard pressing to fight against that when you, they telling you that not only do you have cancer, but you have passed it on to your your, your daughters and your and, and, and pass it on to your granddaughters, and that your husband is coming out with Parkinson's. You know, it it, it it can be much. Now, talking to her, she's in great spirits. Talking to her, she is full of faith towards God. I just want you to know that. However. The Lord put in my heart, it's time to call the ecclesia. Y'all feel me? Because I know what church is for. I know what church is. I know, I know, listen to what I'm saying. Church is not the basilia. I know church is, Christ did not die for the brick and mortar. But Christ died and rose again. Understand, he just didn't die but he rose again in the power of the resurrection. Listen to what the Bible said. With all power in his hands. So the church is a spiritual house also. It's made out of flesh and bones. But it's also a spiritual entity of people all over the world. That's the church. All over the world come together to deliberate on a matter. To make a decision. Are you with me now? He had about Sunday Kaya. To make a decision that is already written in the Holy Scripture. See, that's the decision you make. You, we're not deliver, we're not deliberating if healing for today. We're not delivering if Christ still heals today. We're not deliberating if if we should lay hands on the sick and they fully corrupt. But that's not what we're deliberating. Pagans deliberate that. Pagans fighting well through Christ who heals today. No, 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 no. We are of the other sect. We are of the other part. We are part of the church that Christ died for. And we know. So we come together and we are deliberating. We are coming together to say that this thing that's in my friend Donna that's being attacked by a wicked spirit. We call it in English cancer. Right? But in the Bible, it's called Molech, right? In the Bible, it's called demons. I'm telling you. Malignancy, the word malignancy, it's found in the Old Testament. And when you look up the word demon, demon, when you look that word up, and you go down to the Hebrew, and you go down to the Greek, it actually means malignancy. Cancer means malignancy of the cells. So, so, so the cause and the root of cancer is demonic. See, there's folks out there that, that want to disagree. There's people out there right now that are listening that's not sure what I'm saying. That's fine. That's fine because the ones that I'm calling are not the ones that are in disagreement. I'm not, if you're in disagreement, now you just got a little piece of information. That's fine. But I know out there, I got 
people. I got people, man, that know that, that, that cancer is from the pits of hell. So we are deliberating, and this is what it means now in the Christian to deliberate. It really means to agree. Listen, 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 because we're moving into something right now. We're moving into something. It is to agree what is already written. That's the deliberation. That's what you got to do with humans. Are we going to agree with what God said, or are we going to agree what the doctor said? Yet of a Sunday, come. Which one are we going to agree with? Are we going to agree with the written word, or are we going to agree with the doctor and 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 the theorists and the physicians and and the knowledge of today and the darkness of the mind? Which one are we going to agree with? Now the ones, listen, the ones that agree with the word, I'm calling you out in a good way. So us. So we can assemble together and agree, deliberate and agree that Donna be free. Yeah, the, uh, uh, that Donna be free. We're going to agree that that cell, that gene that the doctor says she had that caused her to easily pass along. How can you pass along a demon? I'm telling you right now that, that to cut that thinking and to cut that mind off. We're going to agree. I'm looking for somebody to agree with me. How can two walk together unless they agree? And God said, if I can find anybody, listen, listen, I'm talking about the world. Ha <laughs> ha. I'm talking about the whole world. If I can find two or three that can agree with me, I don't, come on, it's great to have 10,000. I would like to have 10,000 agree. More for, but he said, if I, if I can find two more people, two more people to agree that Donna does not need to suffer. That somebody's not out there saying, I got cancer, let her have cancer, let her fight it on her own, or uh, uh, none of that. But I can find somebody, yeah, if I can find somebody to agree with the word that is already written, we can, we can do some things. And then we actually become this church that Christ died for and rose again, that he told pity, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. And now we move prophetically into this realm where we can pull down wickedness and we can pull down disease together. That's what we're moving into. We're blind. You got any evidence on this? Man, I went to this small little church in, in Marshall, Texas. And I was taught this. And after we were taught this, we did it. And we was at this church, and our women was dying of cancer. You, you not hearing me today. I lived through this, that the women in our church were catching cancer. The pastor's wife caught cancer and died. The elder wife caught cancer and died. Our, our, our women, my friends, uh, her wife caught cancer and died. And, and, and then we finally, the men... We had a men's meeting. Let's have Sunday. We had a men's meeting, man. And we were sitting in the guy and, he said, and we said, you know what? How many of our women going to die before we do something? How many of our women and our children going to lose their mothers before we do something? So we got together. We got together. We was called out. They had a men's meeting. We was called out. And we drew a line in the sand, man. And we said, you know what? This is it. It got so bad that people didn't even want to use the word cancer because they felt as soon as they used the word cancer, they were going to catch it. The devil put a fear in that little body. But we stood up. Thank God for great leadership. Thank God for great leadership. We stood up and said, he said, look, this is what the word says about sickness and disease. This is what the word says. Are we going to stand on the word? Are we going to stand on the word of God or are we going to fold up, man? And the Bible said, quick, ye be like men. And so the men of the house stood up and we said, you know what? I mean, it was a wild meeting. And I don't mean out of order. I'm talking about you felt the power of God that time, man. And we said, you know what? That's it. That's enough. Ain't nobody going to have cancer anymore in the body. Now, I want you to know, when you say stuff like that and people are dying, it, it, it tests your faith. So we say, no more, no more. 
So what we did was we went to Arkansas, and there was a little campground up there. And our pastor was from uh, uh, Arkansas. He used to be up there as a boy. And it was, it was a mountain full of shell. And it was a little cliff. And the men went up there and we fasted and we prayed. And then we got some congos and some drums and some tambourines. And this, I'm talking about this was multicultural, right? Multicultural. So when I say, when I talk about this church, it just ain't for the black people, white folks. It was mixed, man. Hispanic, white people, black people, but we was all brothers. And we went to that hill. Yeah, we went to that hill. Me just thinking about it. now, I feel the power of God, man. We went to that hill and we began to prophesy over the air. This literally happened. This is not some, this is some story. I was there. We began to prophesy. And we began to pull down Molech. And we began to pull down demonic spirit. And we made a stand in the spirit. We made a stand. And, and me reflecting on that, I realized that what Brother Randy did was he called the church together. He called those who've been twice called out out of religion. Because what we did was really highly non-religious. Highly non-religious. And we was called out of sin. We was born again. And I got pictures somewhere of us on that mountain, level come with our hands raised up like this. Come on. Now here's the thing about understanding when you're dealing with cancer, right? Dealing with these diseases that attach themselves so firmly and fixedly into people's bodies that that's a simple laying on a the hand. They they resist it, right? They resist it. Cancer resist. Resisted. I ain't saying it can't work. I'm saying it's, it, it, it seems like cancer and other ones, the symptom when they, when, they, when they dig in, it's hard to lose them. It's easy to do preventive stuff as opposed to once they get in, trying to get them out, right? And we begin to speak these things that be not as though they were. And so we pray to God. Listen, you pray to God. And then once God has anointed you, what God has adopted you, right? God begin to give you direction and then you begin to follow the direction of God. So you're not out there just doing blind stuff and stupid stuff, right? So God said, this is, this is what I want you to do, right? And you go back to the, the teachings that I always do and hope for the rest of my life. Teach me how to pray. So when it comes down to a lot of things, we don't know how to pray as we ought, right? So you go to God and say, God, this is a situation. My son in jail, my daughter's on drugs. Uh, they try to take my house. I don't know what to pray. And then the Holy Spirit will teach you how to pray. And then you begin to speak those words according to the orchestration of the Holy Ghost. And so he told us, this is what I want to do. So we get up there, we pray to God, we get instruction, and then we begin to warfare by renouncing this trespasser that has come into our fellowship trying to destroy our women. This actually happened. And from that moment on, it stopped. No more cancer. And, and, and he even tried to jump on Joyce one time. But it was too late because I already knew that once I call the believers out, once I call the ecclesia out, and once we deliberated and say this is what's going to happen, that it was just a matter of time. So, so I know what to do and down a position. I know what to do. So I'm calling on the body of Christ. Those that when they heard this, you said, yes, Blaine, that's me. That's me. And then, and what, and what the instruction I got from the Lord is that for the next 12 weeks, I'm going to send her one healing scripture. I'm going to send her one healing scripture. And then I'm going to preach on it, that one, so that you may have faith. And then together we can move as a body as we decree and declare what is already written in the Holy Script. And that thing, that monster, that demon has no choice but to bow to the word of God. Has no choice. And we are going to bring justice, justice to her body to her family, to her husband. 
So there's three things we're going to do. One, we're going to pray that the cancer gas should get annihilated, 100% annihilated. Two, that gene that says she's going to pass on out, we are new creatures in Christ. Hey, be hey, behold, all things pass away. And three, we're going to deal with that Parkinson's disease, which I feel is just a little imp, right? Some little disease in the mind. So we, we're going to deal with that. And, um, and some of you are doctors out there who understand Parkinson's, the nurses understand it. So you probably have more insight on that. So I'd be welcome if you go ahead and write me and, 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 and talk to me about that. And so we, we can pray with, listen, with wisdom and that we can pray with courage. Amen. And so... Um, basically, we're going to have a school of healing for this summer. So once a week, you know, as God able, I don't know when it's going to, I don't know if it's going to be a set time. I know it's going to be once a week. And I'm going to go ahead and post it on YouTube. And I'm going to post it on, on Facebook. And I'm hoping that you will, too, take this right here and not just like it. Because I really ain't going for the, really, the likes. I mean, likes are nice. You know, it's, you get a little instant gratification. It, 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 it acknowledges that I know other people are watching it, but really I want you to share, right? Because I believe that this call is for more people out of my circle of influence. And that there's people, I just got a flash from God right there, that there's people in Canada who wants to be a part of this. Who, and there's people, the Holy Spirit speaking to me, that...